Hi everyone, Octoract here. I'm sure we're all familiar with this, where you try to log in on Geometry-Meltdown, Sub-Zero, or World, and it just refuses to log in. We can double check the password and make sure to paste it in from a password manager, but we still get nowhere. The fact is, you can't log into your GD account on these spin-off games, and while it might have been possible for a little while several years ago, that doesn't help you now. More importantly, this means that you can't get the completion stats or unlocked icons on your main account. Or, at least that's what we all thought. In this video, I'm going to present a method that you can use right now in 2023 to bring your stats from these games to your account in the full edition of Geometry Dash. However, I must preface this video with a warning that using this method constitutes cheating, and you should not permanently damage your account using this technique. We'll talk about why that is towards the end of this video, but for now, let's see how this trick works. Our biggest requirement is a rooted Android system. While we could use an Android phone or tablet and root it, it will just be easier to run an Android emulator with a root mode feature. Mimu is one such emulator. Now, this isn't a video about Mimu, so we'll skip past the installation and get right to work. Just understand that the Windows account you want to install Mimu for must be an administrator. If you try to install Mimu with a regular account and escalate to a separate administrator account when prompted, Mimu will actually not install correctly. If necessary, then you may need to log out, log back into an administrator's account, change your main account to an administrator, and then log back into your main account. Most people, though, have their main account set as an administrator and can just go ahead with the installation. Alright, so here is Mimu. The first thing we need to do is enable root mode. This is accessed from the hamburger menu, and then settings, and then this toggle right here. So once we click it on and click OK, we'll be asked whether we want to restart later or restart now. We'll choose restart now so that we can apply the change settings immediately. Once we're back, the next step is to sign into the Play Store, which I've already done. So now let's go get some apps. The first is Root Checker. Uh, this will be used to make sure that our root mode is actually working. The next thing that we want is Root Browser. Uh, and this will be used to access our game files. So it's going to be this one with the lightning bolt. And then the final thing that we need is the actual Geometry Dash spinoff game that we want to work with. In this case, I'm going to use Geometry Dash Meltdown. Uh, what I'm about to show you is going to work for Meltdown, Sub-Zero, and World, but I'm only going to show off Meltdown here because the process is pretty much the same, and I'll explain the, the slight differences that exist between them later in the video. Once these apps are downloaded, we want to use the Root Checker app to see if we are root. And it looks like we are, in fact, root. And then we want to use Root Browser to make sure that we can see the root of the file system. Alright, so I see data, dev, mount, etc., proc, root. Yeah, this is the root of a typical Linux file system. And then if we swipe left, we can see the root of a typical Android file system, where we've got DCIM, Android, download, and so on. So now we know we can access the files that we need to access. Now we are ready to begin. However, first we should consider disconnecting from the local network on the physical device. The reason is advertisements. Ads will appear when the app serving the ads, like Geometry Dash Meltdown, is started with an internet connection. By cutting this connection before launching the app, then we won't have to deal with ads. Mimu, unfortunately, does not come with a network disconnect option, so to get rid of ads, we must do so on the host machine instead. The good news is that there is not a lot of exclusive content across all the GD spin-off games, so disconnecting from the internet just for these games isn't that bad. Anyway, if you're following along, the choice is yours. Our first step is to open GD Meltdown and generate some save data. We'll just crash right away and then exit out of everything. And that is good enough. So we'll close that. Now I want to go into root browser and go track down our files. So from the root directory, we want to go into data, and then go into another folder named data, and then scroll all the way down to where we've got com.robtop.geometry-meltdown. You can see some of it in the middle is cut off, but that's the name of the folder. And here we've got the two game files that we generated. 
Okay, so now what we need to do is go to our host system and open up File Explorer. And in the address bar, we want to type in percent, local app data percent, and go to that directory. And here is where we can find the game files for our main instance of Geometry Dash, the, ver the Steam version. So we'll click on the folder named Geometry Dash, and these are the game files of interest. These contain all of your stats, your levels, uh, they even have your password inside, so it automatically logs you into the server. So very important files. We're going to copy these with Control C. We're going to go to Download, and here we've got this folder called Mimu Download. This folder is placed here when you install Mimu, and it acts as a bridge between your host system and the Android system running inside of Mimu. So we'll go in here, create a new folder named and name it Original to indicate that these are our original game files. And then we'll paste them inside with Control-V. Alright, so now Mimu will be able to access them. So let's open up Mimu real quick. And let's swipe left and go into the download folder. And here you can see the folder that we just created as well as our game files. So we'll select all of those by clicking on their icons and then hit the copy button here. And then we can swipe left to go back to the root part of the file system. We'll select the two game files that we generated, toss them out, click on the plus button, and click on the paste icon. Alright, now you'll notice that it says that the size of these files is all zero bytes. What we'll do is we'll just uh, swipe down to refresh, and now we've got 6.9, 6.9, 2, and 2. So now they're showing their correct sizes. And at this point, we should be good to go. So let's jump back to Geometry Dash and see how things have changed. And if we go to the icon select menu, you can see that I've already got my ball, I've got 90,000 stars, 149 secret coins, and I have access to almost all of the icons in the game. Uh, there are some cube icons that I don't have access to, and we will be fixing some of these in a little bit. So now all that's left to do is beat the levels, and we'll go from there. So I'll see you when I get done with that. Alright, so I completed all three levels with all three coins, so now this game is basically complete. All we have to do is get our data out. So as you might expect, we'll get the data out the same way we put it in. So we'll go to root browser, go to data, in our root directory, go to data, scroll all the way down to meltdown, open that up, select our four files, copy them, swipe left, Go into download and here we're going to create a new folder and name it meltdown to indicate that this contains all of our game files that have come from meltdown they have all of our completed levels and then we'll just go and paste them in here and we'll quickly refresh and make sure that everything's the same size it looks good okay so before i actually show the data being put onto the main instance, why don't we take a look at my account in the main instance of Geometry Dash first to conduct a comparison. So we'll open up Steam. Uh, I, I'm still in airplane mode. I'll have to change that real quick. I'll hit the button and we'll connect. But if we go in here, you can see that the stars that showed up on Meltdown are my actual stats, 90,199, and that's what I've had for over a year since I quit. Okay, so we'll exit out of that, and now let's go get our files. So we'll go to File Explorer, go to the Download folder, Mimu Download, and then in here in Meltdown is where we've got our files. So we'll copy those with Control C. Again, we'll go up to the address bar and type in percent, local app data percent. Go to Geometry Dash. We'll delete these files. We actually did make a backup of them, by the way, because they're still inside of Mimu Download in that folder named Original. And then we'll paste these ones here. All right. So now that that's done, let's start up Geometry Dash again and take a look at how things have changed. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the player statistics. You can see that the number of completed levels has reached 25. So uh, Stereo Madness through Finger Dash make up 21 levels. The challenge, which you recall comes from that Vault Keeper's uh, special level, that's number 22. And then the Meltdown levels add another 3, bringing us up to 25. 
Next, if we go and take a look at the icons, you can see there are stars, all six of them from Meltdown have transferred over, and we've got 158 secret coins. And then, looking at the icons, these icons here are all normally locked, and now I actually have them. So I'll just choose this one for completing, uh, what was it, the first level. I forget its name. Anyway, it's for completing the very first level in Meltdown with all coins, so I'll just select that one here. Um, and then I know that this one and this one can be unlocked in World using the same trick. Okay. So, finally, let's connect to the servers now that our Wi-Fi is connected and take a look at our profile. And yeah, as you can see, I've got this icon, I've got my stars, and it's only displaying 150 secret coins. That's the limit as to what it can display. But I do have 158, as we saw here. So that's just a funny quirk of the profile system. So, the last test now is to actually take a look at my profile from the perspective of somebody who is not me, from the perspective of another player. And the easiest way to do that is to simply delete my game files and have no account and take a look at the, the in-game leaderboards. So let's close GD, and we will once again go to that location in our file system. Uh, percent local app data percent. Go to geometry dash, and we're just going to yeet these. We'll hit delete. And now let's start up Geometry Dash. Now it'll go full screen because it doesn't have my settings to load from, because those files do contain your settings. And this is really loud, we'll turn that down. Uh, it does keep the menu song because the menu song is a different part of the game. That's part of your assets. Those are stored in a different location. So let's just look myself up, right? Make sure to click on the player set. And look at that, even with no account, right? This is just a, f this is like a fresh install of Geometry Dash minus, minus the custom songs and everything already being downloaded. But as far as accounts go, this is a fresh install of Geometry Dash. And as you can see, I've got the stars from Meltdown, I've got the coins and I even have the icon. <clears throat> Anybody looking at my profile right now will see that I've brought in data from Meltdown. Now that you know what the general idea is, let's talk about how it worked for Sub-Zero and Meltdown. In Sub-Zero, the icons you unlock for completing its levels are not implemented in the main game, so you won't be able to select and use them. However, you will still get the stars, secret coins, and additional levels in your player statistics. For World, the only levels of interest are the 10 short levels spread across the two islands. For this, you will get stars and a couple of icons, both of which will carry over to the main game, as I mentioned. In your player statistics, completed levels will also increase by 10. However, there is something even more interesting that you can do in World. You know how World only allows you to play specific user-made levels? It turns out you can bypass that by saving levels in the main game and then bringing your game files over to World. The levels that you save will be playable in World. Also, you know how GD can only hold so many levels locally before the levels in your save folder turn into download pointers? You've probably seen it before when you go to a level in your save folder and you see it downloading for a little bit before you can hit the play button. Even levels in this state can be downloaded in World, so you're actually able to bring over whatever levels you want to World using this method. There's no limit on the number that you can bring over at once. On the screen now, in fact, is footage of me playing a random unrated challenge level in GD World, which I brought in with my game files. It's a great trick if you want to, for example, show some people levels on your phone but haven't bought GD on the Play Store. Now let's talk about the ethics of using the method I showed in this video to bring stats from the spinoff games to one's account in GD. The naysayers are likely to object to my use of an emulator. However, I could have done all of this by rooting an Android phone and moving data between it and my PC via USB cable, email, or any file transfer app I please. So if the emulator isn't a problem, what about rooting the phone? Well, rooting a phone simply means getting super user access to the device. The owner of a device should have the right to exercise absolute control over it on a software level. 
This is something that we do on PCs all the time, both because we need to and because the software ecosystem is generally much more open on PCs. Regardless of the software ecosystem though, there's nothing inherently wrong with becoming root on one's own device, phone or not. Okay, well then what about messing with the game files? Well, tinkering with game files isn't necessarily wrong either. We mess with game files to install texture packs and custom songs, and there's nothing wrong with that. Unlike somebody changing an object texture to make, for example, a memory daemon easier, we didn't alter the gameplay of any levels to make them easier. The stats being transferred were earned legitimately. So, where then is the problem? The problem is that Robtop doesn't want stats from the spinoff games accumulating on player profiles in the main game. This is evidenced by the fact that Robtop, despite reusing so much of GD to make the spinoff games, prevents you from signing into your account on the spinoff games despite all of the code to make accounts work being present in the spinoff games. Also, one thing we did not cover is that you can actually save your data to the cloud in Meltdown, Sub-Zero, and World. The GD servers do accept logins on Meltdown, for example, but only if the login is already provided by the game files rather than fresh through the user interface. So if we went to the account page after moving our game files to Meltdown, we could have used the save and load buttons there. However, once the data are in the cloud, stats from Meltdown or other spinoff games are actually scrubbed from the save, so you won't receive the icons or stats when you load your data later on. It also doesn't matter what game you use to save your data to the cloud, data from the spinoff games will be detected and removed. And just as a side note, this effectively means that iOS is completely shut out from doing what I showed in this video. So, Robtop has actually taken a few different actions to prevent data from Meltdown, Sub-Zero, and World coming into the main edition of Geometry Dash, and we need to recognize and respect that. Let me put it another way. Suppose I use save data from my account on Absolute's 1.9 private server to boost up my stars and demons on my account in GD. That would obviously be cheating, right? The data from those two games should never be mixed. Well. The same holds true between GD and the spin-off games. It doesn't matter that they were all developed by the same person. Robtop has the right to say whether the game's data can be mixed, and his design choices have clearly communicated his word on that matter. The only reason the method I showed in this video works is because it would be inconvenient to change the save format to prevent data transfer. Even if Robtop added a flag to the save file to indicate what game last touched it, clever players could just create a tool to manipulate or strip that flag out of the save files. There just isn't any point of starting that game of cat and mouse. So the last thing you might be thinking is, well, you just showed yourself bringing data from Meltdown onto your account. Isn't that a bit hypocritical? No, not really, because I made a backup of my game files and reverted to that backup after recording the demonstration. My stats are back to where they were before making this video, just like if nothing had happened. My goal with this video was not to increase my stats or let anybody else do the same. I wanted to inform people and show off the more technical side of Geometry Dash, and I think this video does that quite well. Of course, you can let me know what you think in the comments below. Before we wrap up, there is one more thing I wanted to cover, and that is whether there might be any use for what I demonstrated in this video. Surprisingly, there might be, but it depends on Robtop. Back when 2.11 was released in 2017, yes, it really has been that long, Robtop added an anti-cheat system that checks if players complete insane or demon-rated levels in less than 10 attempts. If this system detects a level on a player's account, it will uncomplete the level for the player, but only when the player loads data from the cloud. Naturally, there are a lot of false flag players and levels, as there are some insanes and even demons that are easy enough to do in under 10 attempts. Players who were unaware of this anti-cheat or simply didn't care could choose to avoid triggering the anti-cheat by simply never loading their data from the cloud, instead working with their game files directly to make backups or even move their profile to other devices. Given how bad this anti-cheat is, skirting around it is fine if the player earned their stats legitimately. 
So coming back to the spin-off games, if Robtop ever decides to allow players to move their stats freely between games, then the method I showed of moving game files manually would be a way of getting around the anti-cheat. Of course, I would rather just see Robtop do away with the garbage anti-cheat, especially since he has a better detection system now, but we'll see if that ever happens. So that is where this video might be useful. Hopefully it won't come to that, and maybe it never will if Robtop decides to keep the different editions of GD separated, but only time will tell. And that is going to do it for this video. If there's anything you missed or think I could have explained better, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.